Lauren, that awkward plant girl. Welcome back to my channel. It's so good to see you guys. Thank you guys for popping in. Thank you guys for sticking with me. I know I haven't been putting out any videos in the last couple of months. Like it's just, life has been insane. Like if you name it, it has happened. It's just insane. And then add to the fact that there is construction next door. The only reason that they're not doing it today is because it is pouring so freaking hard that they cannot be out there. So it's just like, ah, uh, so much stuff. But Anyway, so today I got some news that we are actually going to be getting snow on Monday. Washington weather has been so insane. It went from being incredibly smoky to just pouring down on top of you, cold, bitter, yuck, all day, every day, to snow. It's going to snow. So I still have plants on my porch. Like, that's how crazy things have been. So today I have to go out there. I have to get my plants off my porch. I have succulents. I have tritoscantia. The fern might be okay, um, but I really should bring that in. So I've got to make room. I've got to move stuff over. I have to pest treat them. Like, it's not going to be like last year where I actually had the time to go dance around the yard and spray them down with the hose. My hose even broke this year, guys. Like, I didn't even have a hose. They broke it when they were redoing our septic systems. Like, <laughs> it's been a mess. Oh my gosh. But yes, yeah, so today we're going to be bringing these in. We're going to be treating them in the house. I guess this will be kind of interesting for folks who don't have a yard and a hose outside. Um, maybe if you're in an apartment, you had porch plants, something along those lines. So that's the plan for today. So let's get into it. Alrighty, here is what I brought in. It was raining so hard outside, so I didn't film anything outside. I just brought them in really quick. These are on the porch, so they didn't get too much water. And I've just got a bunch of different kinds of succulents here. I've got some hens and chicks and echeveria. It's so funny that these grew babies, and they got a lot of sun damage this summer. They were just out in the yard and had no coverage, and then they were very drought hardy, so it worked out really well. But I'm hoping they make it through the winter and their babies are so cute. Oh my gosh. This is the watch chain succulent, I think. So, so far so good with that. This poor Boston fern got it so bad this summer. It was put through the ringer in the middle of the yard, full sun, no water. It started to push out some new growth now that it's back on the porch and it's cold and rainy. But it's not happy. This one, however, was absolutely thrilled. This foxtail fern, it, it loved being out there. It loved the full sun. It loved drying out. It was pretty thrilled with what was going on. I mean, it lost a couple little things here and there, but nothing too hard. Nothing too crazy. This coleus over here was so mad. It's going to be a project to fix this. And then this calancho over here actually has quite a bit of damage. Um, it's really fuzzy. It's so soft. So hopefully it's not too mad and makes it through the winter. This one is really fuzzy and soft too, but has the water droplets that landed on its fuzzy leaves and never left, had the sun shining on it. And then this is an elephant bush, variegated. It's white, and pink, and green, and gorgeous. And this is silver spoons calancho, I think. And then over here is a little Echeveria project that's like three years old, still living in water. <laughs> Desert Rose, uh, I believe is the name of that succulent. And then this dried out, and you can see all the new growth in there. It tried, but it was just bad. All of these are fixer-uppers. This is the biggest fixer-upper of them all, though. This is a two-year-old Tratoscantia that is just not happy with me. Not happy with me at all. It's leggy. It's got a lot of dead growth. We're going to have to chop and debris this entire thing. It's going to be a nightmare. <laughs> but it's going to be so happy and I'll have a lot of propagations and a lot to gift when I'm done. So it'll it'll be a win in the end. Okay, so I went and I moved some stuff around. These are my bathroom plants. So we've got the ficus burgundy, uh, ficus altissima, and ficus audrey here. They're recovering from cold at the end of spring because our heater died in the room that they were in. And this one has spider mites. <laughs> and then this guy over here is trying to not have spider mites. That is my blue star fern. Oh. And then I put the succulents over here. So that way they're right up against the window. They're getting direct morning light. I've got my little baby ficus over there. That did not take the cold very well at all. And then I'm just trying to get all the stuff that was outside as close to the window as possible. I'm hoping that the growth will stay compact on this one. But if it's cute and fluffy and, you know, stretched out like the rest, that's cool too. No biggie. 
And then over here we have a staghorn fern, which is doing so amazingly well. It looks terrible right now because I haven't watered him in like three weeks, but I'm giving him water and he'll recover just fine. Got this ivy trailing up and I've got my rabbit's foot ferns back there. So they're still getting uh, water. This is another ficus. This is like a ginseng ficus or something. It's not happy. But Fabio is doing fabulous because he's amazing. New little growth on there. Oh my gosh, I love Fabio so much. This is an umbrella tree, by the way. If you haven't seen him, I got him for $10 and he had spider mites. Worth it. Absolutely adore this plant. And then this is where a lot of those succulents are going to go. And here's where I kind of moved everything. I put it all in the bathtub because it's all going to be a big, dirty, messy project. Not a single one of these is going to come away unscathed. So we'll just kind of go through and do it one by one. We're going to tackle this first because I'm not going to do it all in one go. It is growing quite prolifically. It's doing an amazing job, but I definitely need to do a lot of work. So first things first, I'm just going to lay it down. And then we're just going to go around and we're just going to chop off... All of the dead pieces you can tell that this is not doing so hot and then we want to make sure that we find a node and remove all of the dead foliage and this is going to be our propagation so you can feel like the little bumps in the stem and that is a node and top cuts like this are going to grow the best so you can do the mid cuts too and that's fine but we're just going to chop all of this off and give this thing some love and then we're going to go through, we're debriding the pot. So we're basically taking out any dead stems, dead leaves, foliage. Um, keeping an eye out for spiders because this was on my porch. And just kind of making sure that we get everything that is yuck out of this pot. I did not mean to do that. Um, a lot of times what you're going to find is the stem itself is actually dyed like it's no longer rooted in the pot and the plant is just trying to sustain itself. And this is actually what I propagated at the beginning of the summer, if I recall correctly. It's been so long though. Oh my goodness. And this is what we're left with. Hello. So much more pretty and happy. Sorry, the sun shifted, so the light changed. <laughs> And for this, we're just going to go through, we're going to super chop everything and just get it all ready for propagating, get rid of all the dead foliage. I did want to take a minute and show you guys this though. This is actually what a Tritoscantia bloom looks like. So you can tell that it's got the different leaves and you can see that that might actually have a seed in there. I'm not 100% sure, but we do have to remove the flowers. They will not propagate, unfortunately. They'll grow roots, but they won't grow anything else. So... That's unfortunate. <clears throat> All right, and this is the finished project. We got Big Mama right here, so she's going to stay in the bathroom. We're going to hang her up. This is all dead trash. Yuck. They're not going to be able to be propagated or anything. And then this is a giant pile of propagation. So if any of you want any of this, please definitely let me know. Um, you can contact me via Instagram or um, you can contact me on TikTok as well. I'm posting about these on there as well. So you can tell that I made sure all of these have nodes. And this guy is really weird. I wanted to talk to you guys about this. This is what happens when you chop and prop your Tritoscantia. When this stays at the base of the pot, it'll continue to push out new growth. You can see that this one stem has three separate growth points, but it's not rooted anywhere. So that's kind of what happens. Sometimes you can get it to root, other times not so much. But it's really, really cool to see. And you don't see it that often except for when it's like lumped in a pot. So just had to share. This is the propagations, that's mama plant. Threw that stuff away. I am gonna come back to these later because this is a lot. It's gonna be a lot to, to prop all this. So we're gonna hold off on that and do a different project and then come back to this. We're going to tackle these guys. Alrighty. First up is the coleus. And honestly, I, I think I just need to chop this guy. I really, really do. <laughs> this other guy didn't make it. And this one little plant, I don't know what its roots are looking like. It's probably just, it's probably just dead. No, it's got a little bit of roots on it. I think I'm going to water prop this guy. 
I was going to chop him and then just throw away the roots, but he's got two new little growth points going, got some roots. And then this Calancho, I want to remove the damaged foliage on it, at least the super damaged foliage. <laughs> you can see here, um, this leaf actually fell off and they will propagate from leaf cutting so you can have new little ones growing. And then you see he's got some broken leaves on the bottom. He fell over in a big rainstorm we had in the middle of summer. And then this one has all these burnt leaves on it. This poor little guy. And I'm just going to remove these just because I don't want anything that could have pests living in it just hanging out in here. I don't want anything attracting spider mites. And dry crunchy beds always attract spider mites. It's a great place to live. So I just kind of want to make sure that that's all gone. I'm keeping an eye out for little spiders and aphids, random piece of bark. But I think I'll leave these little guys on there. They're kind of super stuck on still. So I'm going to leave them on until they're ready to fall off. And this guy's good to go, I think. And then I'm just making sure that all the leaves are good on this. I want to make sure everything's hydrated. There's no root rot. Remove any dead foliage in the base. This plant is so freaking beautiful. Oh my gosh. It's pink and cream and just, ah, uh, it's so stunning. And it's really inexpensive for such a beautiful plant. And these leaves are edible too, actually. They taste like citrus. They taste kind of like citrusy peas. So it's kind of cool. All the elephant bushes are edible. Oh, there's so many little leaves. And this is going to drop more now that it's getting less sunlight in here. I guarantee it. But hopefully I can make this one through the winter. My last one fell prey to mealybugs. So we're just going to keep our fingers crossed with this because it's so pretty. And then this Haworthia, I just need to pull everything out. That's actually a little baby. I don't know if that's going to make it. I don't know. It looks like it had some roots. I don't know. I'm not very good with succulents, guys. So if you have any advice, it looks like rot, but it doesn't feel like rot. So maybe soil. Um, maybe I can try to water propagate this. I'm not sure. Um, let me know what you think. <laughs> and then let me get the rest of this out. Uh, I've got a leaf here. Hopefully I can get this out. It does have two other pups. It's so worthy. It did not do too bad out here actually it's gonna need a repot i don't want to do it right now though i can remove all this yuck oh my gosh i thought this plant had died it's a little piece of succulent that totally blew over in the wind oh my goodness so it's a little piece <laughs> we'll save it uh, it looks like it is all attached no rod at the base everything looks good uh, no mush and yuck, no rotted roots. Let me try to get these little... Uh, there we go. It'll be a little less stress on the mother plant. And then this guy's got some roots, so I'll try to water prop this one too. Just in case if the one doesn't make it, then we'll save this one and have this... Yeah, you know, the backup plant. <laughs> but yeah, and then there's another pup on there too, so... This is that Silver Spoons Calancho, and there's more of that little plant that kind of fell off. It fell off a little table and ended up like being rolled away in the wind. This one actually has some roots on it. Maybe it fell in there sooner. But let me remove all of the foliage. It's all leggy and dropped all its bottom leaves. But this one is super soft as well. And all of these super fuzzy ones I got for my birthday, I was on like a fuzzy kick. Uh, back in July. Milotai. Uh, I think it's Silver Spoons is the, the common name for this Kalancha, though. And we'll try to propagate that. <laughs> but yeah, hopefully this one turns out really well. I'm just going to put all these succulents on that little tray and give it as much light as I can. This has some more of that stuff in it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I keep fighting this stuff. This is the succulent that didn't want to die. The wind just blew it everywhere. <laughs> I threw the main pot away because it was so destroyed. Uh, the roots are not too bad on this one, actually. Uh, I think I'm going to leave it in there. It's been in this perlite for 
forever. It could probably be in a better setup, honestly. I just need to take the time to do that. Get this yuck off of here. But it grew really well this summer for what it endured. I mean, honestly, I lost a bunch of plants this summer outside. This poor snake plant. This is a moonshine snake plant. It was in my dark kitchen and needed to be rerooted. Roots look good. There's no rot. Looks like it might be reverting at the base a little bit. Uh, I don't know. Oh, gosh. Yeah. That, that's the day. <laughs> I do need to change out the water because the water is so gross. But other than that, it really needs a better setup. And you can say, see where it went through all of this trauma. Like the leaves are all wrinkly. The foliage is all funky. And this succulent's been living in water for a long, long time. And I love the little pink stems and the little pink edges. I want these to get really, really big eventually. And I'm just going to clean out this water too. It's all really gross. This is what happens when you don't love on your outside plants for a long time. It just gets gross. So I'm going to rinse all that off and refill it with fresh. And now it's time to tackle this project. Um, a lot of people would just deadhead this fern and chop off everything. But everything that is green gives the plant energy and life. And I'm trying to check and see, like, this is one plant right here. So it was already chopped all the way back, and it grew this one little leaf from it. That's one little baby plant. So I do not want to remove that. And then there's another one here. You can see that it's pushing out a runner here. That's what that green thing is. And then it's got this other little guy coming in over here. And then it has an actual frond. And then... It's hard to tell when they're just stems like this and they don't have any growth. They can still push out new growth. So I'm just going to leave them in there. I'm just trying to make sure that nothing is squishy. Everything is staying where it's supposed to be. And I can remove some of this dead growth, some of this brown growth. But for the most part, it's doing all right. There is new growth coming in. It's just a little bleached. It needs a little love. I think it's going to do well in the window over the summertime. And I'm going to keep my fingers crossed. Look at the baby leaf unfurling. So that way you get to see what an unfurling frond looks like. <laughs> I dropped that one. Um, and you get to see what the runners look like where it's going to make new plants. And I also wanted to update you on the Bella Palm that is in my bathroom. It's the over the toilet palm. It's just hanging out here. It's doing an amazing job. And I just have it sitting in here with the water reservoir underneath it. And I top water when it goes dry is really all I do uh, when I remember. Because not that often, honestly. And this is just a dollar store vase. And this plant is doing awesome. There is a grow light above it, but it's just a regular grow light bulb that's just in the vanity mirror. So it's growing. It's got roots. It's doing awesome. I'm pretty stoked about it. And then this is a piece lily over here, and all the shiny leaves are actually new growth. It came super cranky. It was not happy, <laughs> and then it got spider mites to boot. So it's actually really happy now, just hanging out in the little candle jar. All right, so this is kind of what everything is looking like right now. So I've got all the succulents there, and then I've got all of the fern, and then we're going to come and we're going to tackle this project now. Um, <laughs> so much to propagate and I actually need to chop off some flowers too, but I got some perlite right here. Um, I don't have any other media, so we're just going to use this perlite prop box and put it all in there. They root really, really well in just about anything. And I put a little bit of water in here and you shake test. So when it sticks together, that's how you know that there is enough water in there. You do not want water just chilling in the bottom though. So that's what I do for it. Because if it's too wet, then it's actually going to rot the Tratoscantia. They're very prone to rotting. So just want to keep that in mind. And for this, I'm just going to speed it up because there is so much. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> it actually took me a good 20 minutes to get all of this in here. But basically, I'm just making sure that the nodes are in the damp perlite. And then I'm going to end up covering it, creating a high humidity environment 
these plants can actually go in terrariums and grow prolifically. So they're, they'll, they'll be fine. They'll propagate like crazy here. If you want some of this, definitely let me know. But it's really, really pretty, actually. Having the purple against the white is just awesome. I think that's it for the day. Hopefully these plants will be all right. It's going to be a complete and total shock going from the cool temperatures outside to my very warm bathroom area. I don't know. And then hopefully we got all the pests. We'll see. This is not how I normally like to do it. Like, I will link my video for last year. That's my preferred way of doing things. So, yep. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. I hope you guys are having a wonderful week. I hope you are staying toasty warm in this crazy weather. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.